Hello there, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. In this video, I want to look at five tech things that we can expect to happen in 2024. Five predictions, five tech trends, however we want to see it. These are five things you should keep your eyes open for because they're probably going to happen next year. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. So the first area is generative AI in the data center. So not what's happening us as consumers, but where it all happens, where all that magic happens up in the data center. This has been a bumpy year for Nvidia. Its stock price has gone absolutely up massive. Its valuation is huge. Why? Because all of these uh, kind of large language models, chat GPT and so on, are all running on Nvidia GPUs. That's how it's working. So Nvidia, of course, this year will continue to forge your way into that area. But AMD and Intel are not going to sit around, do nothing about it. So first of all, we're going to see more from AMD. AMD has already announced its new series of uh, machine learning accelerator, the Intrinsic MI300 series, and they claim it's the only board that can run a full Llama 2 70 billion parameter model on one single uh, accelerate on one single unit so you only need one to run the whole model and they say that will of course reduce costs improve performance and so on also intel aren't sitting around doing nothing they have come up with their fifth generation xeon processors where they say there's ai built into every core and then parallel to that they're also working on their third generation of gaudi ai accelerator gaudi 3 which they've already physically shown off exists in physical silicon and we can see that next year so while nvidia are forging ahead there really is now forming a three-way battle as it is so often between these big three intel amd and nvidia trying to now capture more of this expanding and potentially huge large language model market and the second thing is what we're going to see in terms of GPUs on desktop. So, of course, NVIDIA have got their 40 series out already. We're going to likely see the 50 series possibly this time next year. So it's still 2024, but right at the end of next year, although they could push it into 2025. It really does depend on how well the 40 series is selling and also what the competition is doing. However, we are going to get a 40 series super refresh. So that's when you get the, for example, the 4070 super model that will be coming out in the first few weeks of January. So do watch out for that. AMD is currently on its RDNA version 3 architecture for its GPUs. We could see RDNA version 4 towards the end of 2024. And if they release early and try to go ahead of NVIDIA, then that could force NVIDIA's hand to release its 50 series earlier. So again, competition is good. The two of them are forcing each other to do better and we're going to see what happens during 2024. But let's not forget Intel. It has made some impact with its Alchemy version of its GPU. Alchemy is the code name for the microarchitecture. It's the Arc, the Arc 380, the 770 and all that kind of stuff. And although it's only got, let's say, a 2 or 3% of the market share, that's pretty impressive considering it's going against Nvidia and AMD who are just the big established names completely and so we could see the next version of the architecture which is called Battle Mage appearing now in 2024 so new cards coming from Intel if they can keep the price down which is what they managed to do with the other ARC ones and yet increase the performance they could become even more of an important player. For the third thing, we go back to generative AI, but now not in the data center, but here at the consumer end, we're definitely going to see lots of generative AI in smartphones in the 2024 running locally, not running away in the cloud. You just have to have a, a window into it, accessing it through an app or your web browser, but actually running locally. We've seen demonstrations of that with the launches of the new chips from Qualcomm and from MediaTek, and we should see that rolling out in actual solutions sometime during 2024. And let's Let's not forget Apple. It has been very quiet on the whole AI front. Of course, it did have face unlock and the kind of the neural engine stuff that it's running, but it really hasn't said anything about a large language model, except for it did actually release its own large language model in October. That went really under the radar. Not a lot of people saw it. I didn't see it. Only worked it out recently myself. And so Apple looks like it's working on bringing large language models and similar kinds of technology to running on device for the next series of iPhones. So interesting to see what comes out there. Talking of smartphones, for the fourth thing, there are going to be new processors coming out in 2024. 
if ARM keeps the same cadence, we're going to see new processors announced in the spring. This will be the Cortex X5, the uh, Cortex A730, and the Mali G730, although they could use the naming of just an increment of five, and these could be the uh, Mali G725, 725, or the Cortex A725. We'll see how much of a leap that particular one is in the architecture. And then, of course, Apple are going to release their new phones as well towards the end of the year, the iPhone 16 range. And that normally comes also with a new processor. Now, in the last couple of years, Apple have released kind of the lower end iPhone with last year's processor and only the Pro version with this year's one. That could change this year. We could have the A18 and the A18 Pro coming out uh, with one being in the normal iPhone, one being in the Pro iPhone. Maybe the difference would be like the number of GPU cores, number of CPU cores could be also to do towards the way the binning works. That's processes that don't quite fulfill all of the needs so they disable a core because it helps improve the yield it's going to be interesting to see what apple do in that respect and the fifth and final thing is i think we're going to see the killer ai app now you might be saying what do you mean by the killer ai app every generation every revolution of technology has had a killer app if you go way way back to the beginning of the PC era when Lotus 123 came out, a spreadsheet, it revolutionized everything. We didn't have spreadsheets really before that. When it came out, everyone was like, spreadsheets are brilliant. Of course, here we are today using spreadsheets and we take them for granted. But when it first entered into the market, it was something amazing, Lotus 123. And of course, we've had so many different examples of that. You know, even just web browsers changed everything. The internet changed everything. Uh, you know, games like Wolfenstein 3D changed everything. I mean, there's so many examples of just that one thing that then just set off a whole new trend. Now, while we do have things like ChatGPT, Dali, Midjourney, Bard, you know, whatever, they are great and they are impressive. I've got a ChatGPT subscription because I think it's such a cool piece of technology, but it's not the killer app. It's not something that becomes so useful everywhere that you go like, oh, when that came out, it changed everything. This has certainly been a technological showcase how they can do these things, these large language models and uh, the image generation, absolutely brilliant, but it's not quite that killer app. It's just more of a technology showcase and they're making money from it. It's working well, but they're isn't quite yet that thing that when it comes out we go ah that was what we were looking for now what is it i don't know because if i knew i wouldn't be standing here i'd be out making it but it's probably towards the lines of you know c3po r2d2 or jarvis something where you can rely with more and more tasks to uh, a, a, some kind of machine learning or artificial intelligence program so not just, you know, set an alarm to go off at 8.30. We can do that now. Not just list me five places to go on holiday in New York. But something where you can say, please pay the energy bill. Please book me a dentist appointment. Uh, please remind me when I don't have enough uh, eggs in the fridge. Uh, when do I have to pay my taxes by? Can you pre-fill my passport renewal form for me? Do I have enough money in my bank account if I have to pay this and this? You know, something that is just a personal assistant in every possible way. Not something you can kind of use occasionally. Set an alarm, remind me this, but something that is just integrated in everything we, we do. Not necessarily robotics, although robotics could have a part to that, but something that is able to help with daily life and it is literally everywhere and has such useful functionality. I hope we see that. Maybe the technology is not here yet. Maybe we're not going to see that. But the rate in which this AI stuff is hurtling along, we could see something, that killer app in 2024. And I really hope that we do. Okay, that's it. My name's Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I'm recording this now at the end of 2023. So if you've got this far in the video, I do want to wish you a happy new year. If you're watching this after the new year and we're already in 2024, thanks for watching. And I hope we'll see some of the things I've talked about coming to fruition over the next few months. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one. <laughs>